folks, I'm on my way down to Bloomfield Road now. I'm meeting up with Derek Spence for a friendly coffee chat in Rollies. He's a former Blackpool player, former Northern Ireland international, so I'm sure he's got lots of tales to tell us. I'm also meeting up with Eamon O'Keefe a little bit later as well, because he wants to chat with me about something he wants to do with his channel. And that's all because of you guys that keep subscribing. So I really appreciate all the subscribers. I know I've picked up lots of new subscribers over the last two weeks or so so well welcome aboard i'm going to be giving you lots of stuff about blackpool behind the scenes all sorts of great videos match reviews things i go to games it's just going to be amazing so keep subscribing keep watching i appreciate every single one of you and to all the new subscribers that have joined over the last month or so welcome aboard you're in for a ride let's go and see what Derek Spence has to say. Hi folks, I'm here in Rollies today with Derek Spence, former Blackpool player, former Northern Ireland international. He had two spells with Blackpool from 1976 to 1978 and also from 78 to 80 and he made 29 appearances for Northern Ireland. So say hello Derek. Hello. <laughs> so here we are, I'm going to start off the questions first Derek, ask you a little bit about your time at Blackpool. Uh, well, Obviously, uh, coming to Blackpool the first time was um, a massive move because Blackpool were uh, in the top four of the sec old second division right. and looking as though they were going to go up. Obviously, Nottingham Forest uh, eventually went up and just pipped us. Yeah. But to join that team mm. uh, from Berry uh, was was awesome. It yeah. was a big move, and it was to, it came the day after I just scored against Holland. Uh, really? with the famous uh, Johan Cruyff and we had <laughs> celebrations in Rotterdam oh. um, what was the score of that game? 2-2 uh, and George Sweet. Best it was George Best's last game I think more or less for Northern Ireland and, uh, I can tell you I didn't look too well on the Thursday morning <laughs> when, I, when I met Alan Brown in, <laughs> yes. in London so, <laughs> um, in fact I vaguely remember him <laughs> and then we went and signed uh, and then I met the lads on the Friday uh, and we stayed over at Southport and then we played Nottingham Forest here as my debut and we beat Nottingham Forest 1-0 wow. against my old team, uh, club mate, or sorry, uh, teammate uh, Martin O'Neill. Right. Uh, so absolutely fantastic week in my life. Yeah. Um, sometimes you have to pinch yourself, did that really happen? Yeah. Uh, to have scored the goal against the Dutch that brought the point back was, was awesome. Unbelievable. Um, so yes, did you celebrate in Holland? Or did you I celebrated in Holland, but, yes. but then to, to join Blackpool the next day, yeah. I knew it was happening, um, so I kept myself um, very fit. Right. Didn't have anything to drink. <laughs> you believe that, you believe anything. You mentioned George Best, so you, yeah. somebody asked a question on a view from the tower, which is what was it like playing with George Best? Well, let's put it this way. As a kid, yeah. I idolised him. Yeah, just like um, the, the the supporters of Blackpool Adelaide, Charlie Adams, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, to the extent George Best was the best player, in my opinion, yeah. in the world at that time. Oh, yeah, uh, without doubt. And uh, I, I personally think there's not many better than him. Yeah. To then end up meeting him and yeah. playing in the same team, and actually being hugged when I scored the goal by him. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Yes. It was, um, and I was a joiner. Wow! So, uh, so you've been hugged by George. Absolutely, Beth. and um, it was just wonderful. And he was the most down to earth guy I've ever met. And it, and it, and that actually uh, has always stayed in my mind. Right. You know, you shouldn't be big headed just because you're a footballer. No. You know what I mean? You think no. you're Mister Wonderful. There yeah. was George Best, the top of the tree, good looking, had everything. Yeah, in it. Had everything. And uh, he just treated everybody the same. Yeah. And, and and I met him on numerous occasions after, and he was always the same. He had yeah. never changed. No. Obviously, his his uh, demise and and the way he, he passed away with alcohol yeah. was um, very it. very sad. Somebody asked a question on a view from the tower. If you remember the game against Bristol Rovers, where you came on second half and we went and we, and we scored four goals in the second half, do you, do you remember that well, game? Well, very very vaguely. Um, I can't uh, actually remember if I actually scored, but I, if it was the season when um, Bob Stoko was here, it could have been because Bob Stoko taught me a lesson in football. Yeah. He actually called me in on a Friday and dropped me when I was actually playing out of my skin and I was leading goal scorer oh. he said I'm, I'm dropping you because you're getting booked in every match and oh, okay. you're, you're a liability because you're your descent and um, and I said yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm playing well I'm doing you know I'm running my guts out for you I'm scoring goals he said no I'm dropping you he said I've got more bad news for you 
He said, I'm fine in your weeks, wages. Well, I started crying at that point. You know what I mean? Because, like, it wasn't a but, fortune them days. No, I no. said, Bob, I've got a mortgage to play. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I left, Bob, and uh, I was very upset because I wasn't involved in the, the Saturday game. Yeah. But you know what? He taught me a lesson. Yeah. I never got booked again for, for no, dissent. No. It's unbelievable. I don't know what was the money said <laughs> or yeah. the fact my pride had been hurt. Mm. But I went on to be the... Um, uh, player, the uh, supporters' player of the year yeah, well, and leading goal scorer. So I have did to, it to make I have to thank player, him. It, yeah, yeah, I have to thank him it? because I concentrated more, obviously, on the game and not retaliating. It was yeah. always for retaliation. Yeah. I never was a dirty player. No, but I used to get a little bit of stick as as strikers do. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, so so I learned to to control my temper, which was great. So right. for that, I'll always be indebted to, yeah. to Bob Stokoe. Thank, thank you, Bob Stokoe. Brilliant. Um, somebody's uh, asked, what is your, can you remember your favourite goal for Blackpool? The favourite oh, goal you scored? Uh, I can remember a couple of goals. And, and obviously, your very first goal for yeah. your, for your, you've just yeah. joined the club in the yeah. second division. We were away at Cardiff. Right. We were getting beat 2-1. There was only minutes to go. Yeah. And the ball was uh, knocked through and the goalkeeper was coming out. And I did what Kenny Douglas would normally do when he just dinked it over him. Oh, yeah. And it was a left foot, which was amazing. Wow. And I dinked it over the keeper, yeah. and we it brought the point home. And I think it was only my second game. Wow. And, that was and, and I loved that. I loved the goal, but I loved the occasion. Yeah. Because it was away from home. Yeah. Last minute, the last... Was it into the Cardiff end, or was it into... I, can't, I honestly can't remember, can't um, remember, but it didn't matter to me. What was your celebration? Did, did, did you do celebration? No, though? we didn't do celebration. It's like going to the corner there's um, a microphone. Um, they didn't do that in those days, did they? I, 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 always, <laughs> over the head. <laughs> I always just think... When I scored a goal, I just went mad. Yeah, I didn't have a particular celebration. No, I yeah. remember Dennis Law used to give it the old one-hander, and and to a certain extent, I tried to model my, myself on that. Um, Dennis Law at the time, uh -huh. um, well, great goal scorer. Yeah. So celebrations, you never really thought much of it, but but I just love scoring goals. I love scoring goals now when I play yeah. walking football. Yeah. I can't I can't understand why people have a, a, a miserable face when they've scored a goal. I know. What? Yeah. What's this all it's about? It's the greatest feeling in the Where's your enthusiasm yet? <laughs> you know, you've trained all week for that, you know. And it's when it went in, I was just... I loved it. Yeah. I still love it to this day. It's when it hits that back of the neck, uh, so you go in. You... The other goal I would say that uh, I really enjoyed was we played Manchester City here yeah. in the League Cup. And, um, of course, I had, Manchester City had saved my career on two different occasions. Uh, through injury, once when I played for Olympiacos, and uh, they brought me back to Manchester and, right. and treated me and got me fit, and uh, and once when I was at Berry, so I owed them a lot. But when we played them here, uh, Joe Corrigan was in goal. I was really good friends with Joe. Right. Dave Watson was the England centre half. Wow! And uh, the ball dropped in the uh, 18 yard box, and I just got to it first. So I was able to say, unlucky, Dave, <laughs> just a little bit slow there. Oh, and yeah. Big Joe's got a finger to it, so I said to him, a bit too hot to handle, Joe. Right? <laughs> you know? And it, it got us a point. We, well, sorry, we got a replay. Oh, and actually, we, we went there and lost 3-0, I think, but uh, we, we give a good account of ourselves. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Great memories. The best thing that happened to me at Bloomfield Road was, um, in terms of goals, was um, I was about to be substituted, I think, Early in the season, uh, 78 season, at home, I hadn't scored for about five games. Right. Uh, early in the season. And Martin Harvey was the um, coach of um, Carlisle United. Right. And he said, They were going to substitute you. And I scored into the cop end. Right. I went on to score a hat trick. <laughs> Unbelievable. And I've never scored a, a second half hat trick in my life. Wow. In fact, I, I, I only probably have scored a few a few hat tricks. Yeah. But the good thing is, I've still got the ball. Still got the match ball, yeah. No. <laughs> no, no, yeah. <laughs> they, they couldn't afford to give you the match oh, ball. Oh, yeah, you didn't get one back in those No, I'm joking. It, it would be lovely to have had to kept the ball, yeah. but no, no. Did it, they not give the match ball? No, yeah, I don't they ever even ask for it, to be perfectly honest with wow, you. Probably possibly. I, I never bothered. I didn't. No. I, things like that never really... No. Um, bothered me you know there was no swapping jerseys no. and that the only thing you could swap was your jock strap I think. <laughs> right, okay. somebody asked me what was the most potent strike force that you played yes. with at oh, Bloomfield well. Road would you say the most well potent? you know um, you, you, you don't get much better than um, Bob Hatton yeah and Mickey Walsh no now I was bought because Mickey was going right and then Mickey stayed it didn't come off 
so I had to play wide left to give the width. Right. So I was playing up front yeah. with two fantastic strikers. Right. So somebody has to do the wide role. And yeah. I scored three goals right. at, for, from October to the end of the season. Yeah. Bob and Mickey scored about 60 between them. You know. <laughs> right, okay. But that's part and parcel of being in a team. Yeah. You know, I was I was brought to play up front. Unfortunately, the move for for Mickey f fell through. Yeah. Uh, but he did go eventually. So so I I would have to say that was a magnificent uh, two players much, to play with. I don't think you get much better than that. No. Um, Who did you play with on the Northern Ireland team? What was the strike force on Northern Ireland? Sometimes you were just left up on your own, you know. But Jerry Armstrong mainly, Billy Hamilton. Right. I played with Sammy McElroy up front, actually, okay. uh, at times. So yeah, sometimes you were just left up on your own, and uh, you know we, we we tried to defend more than anything. Yeah, you know? um, we didn't do an awful lot of attacking. No, you know, because we, we we weren't. You weren't the greatest the team. Greatest team no, no. no. Even I mean, though we had probably at one point yeah, been the greatest the player in the, the world. world's greatest player. But but I would say the Northern Ireland team. Uh, that, that I joined uh, and when I, when I made my debut against Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia are a top team in Europe, uh, probably in the top four at least. And we beat them 1-0 on my debut. Wow. And that team was an awesome team. We had the Arsenal back 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 three. We had Pat Jennings, we had Sammy Nelson, Pat Rice. Oh, we had Chris Nickel and Big Alan Hunter. My God, I wouldn't have liked to play against them myself, you know. No. So we had Sammy McElroy, you know, we yeah. had some fantastic players, you know, yeah, he's a good uh, team. in that team. So Just all in all, I played with some very, very talented players. I was very fortunate um, because I was a lower league player. Uh, I never considered myself to be um, top notch, you know, international player. Yeah. But actually when I got to play for the international team, I never let anybody down. Right. I always played reasonably well, so I would have loved the opportunity to have played in the first division. I think yeah. I, I think I would have been okay. I yeah. wouldn't have been maybe a regular, you know. Um, you have to be realistic, you know. Yeah. Um, but certainly the championship didn't hold any fear at all. In, in fact, I wish I'd have played a bit more in that, you know. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I thoroughly enjoyed my career and I actually enjoyed playing in the third and fourth divisions. They were always a challenge and it was always a battle. Yeah. Um, which you didn't get them battles the same in the first division. It was no, more cultured, no, you know. There was a more, well, there you know, is even now where there's a bit more space. Absolutely. You get in the Premier League, it's very fast. Yeah, very well, fast. football's changed beyond recognition, you know. I don't necessarily think for the best. No, no. <laughs> it can be a bit boring at times. Yeah, I mean, the money's crazy now. Isn't money's it? money's like, crazy. I mean, if you'd have been on that kind of money now, you just can't really imagine <clears> that. I that suppose, life. you know, the, the question is people say, well, would you, would you, do you really envy them and all that there? Not really, you know. Uh, yeah. It would be absolutely fantastic if you had a lovely big fat pension every year and you didn't have to get out of bed. But there again, there's something about being motivated to work. Yeah, of course. You know, was, yeah. I'm 67 now and I love work. Yeah, I love to get out of bed early and do something. And yeah. when I'm not doing anything, I'm bored out of my skull. Yeah. So, so you do keep yourself busy, don't I you? I do keep myself busy. Ah. And John and I and Eamon are going forward with our um, Ex Players Association. We're going to make that probably the best. Uh, ex players association in the country, but yeah. but we're going to make it, and we need to do a lot more. Because so, what sort of stuff are you doing with the, with the ex Well, we've got some fantastic ideas about yeah. going into schools. We we have to talk this through with the club, because yeah. don't forget we've had yes a long history the Adams of, family. of nothing. In fact, we can't the, mention the word oh on it. Well, no, no, the, the previous <laughs> the previous owners um, yeah, didn't want anything to do with no. the ex players, and they and and obviously uh, one in particular didn't even like us, you know. So, you know, what chance had we? That's now ridiculous. we have an owner who's a supporter. Yeah, yeah. I came to the meeting. It was absolutely yes. fantastic. So what do you think um, about Simon Sadler? I thought he was absolutely awesome. Yeah. Um, Putting the free bar on yeah. uh, for all the supporters who were there it was yeah. wonderful, but yeah. I had to go. Unfortunately, oh, yeah. I was working. You missed it, so I missed it. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, I just thought the whole evening was fantastic. Yeah. It, it inspired me. It got me thinking again about the club. Yeah. Uh, and let's be fair, lots of people have um, not connected back yeah. with the club, yeah. and that was one of the things that was thought. So, so yeah. where can the ex players come in? Yeah. And we're going to we're going to do that. That's one yeah. of the things we want to do. We want to inspire people to come back. Yeah, you know because it's it, it, 
So know, what I, sort of things are you going to be doing, Dick? Well, we were, just, uh, I think we should just get out into the community and do as much things as we can. Right. And of course, we're not going to do it just on an angle. Well, we want to do it properly with the club's blessing, yeah. with the community the trust, trust blessing, yeah, yeah. you know, with the, um, the supporters' trust blessing. Yeah. We all, we're all singing from the same hymn sheet. Yeah. We need to be utilised more right. because the history of this club is based around ex-players. Of course it is. You yeah, know, absolutely. And, and we had a we had an evening for Dave Sorella, yeah. who's struggling Which with Alzheimer's. We've done yeah. a video of him. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you can catch that and, on YouTube. And, you know, we raised over a £1,000, yeah. of which we give £500-odd to Alzheimer's. Yeah. Uh, and, and people need to know more about that. And yeah. we need we can do that. We can inspire young people yeah. to come to the ground. We can inspire old people who, have, who are not here yeah. because they've fallen out with whoever. Yeah. You know, let's get them back. Yeah. I did 20 years in the community and that's what I did. Yeah. That's what I, I went out and passionately got people to come here. Well, wow, that's just fantastic. Uh, that's and, fantastic. And, and I think when I when I joined them in 96, we were we were averaging about 3,000, 2,000, 3,000. You know, it's not that long ago. No. We had 15, 16,000. I, I, I know. That well, was makes wasted. you happy. Yeah. We're wasted. Well, wasted. wasted. No, we're maybe, you know. They'll be fine, but they had all those well, films in it. We had so all it. We'll get done. them back. We'll we get will. them back, I, I, without a doubt. I think it's all going to change. And, and, and We've got the facilities, really, now, yeah. haven't we, here? I'm just listening to Simon uh, with his three-year plan to have the training ground. Yeah. You know? it, it just... It yep. just was music to my ears. Yeah. Uh, and, and at last, my ears actually opened because the owner was talking to sense. To, yes, I'm talking to us as fans. <laughs> and and, and not, not listening to uh, the previous owners who said the same things over and over yeah. and over again. I knew, actually knew, nothing was going to happen. Yeah, nothing. They were and that's so soul de- that's soul destroying. It is. Soul. And, and, and of course, he conned, he conned other people into believing that and they'd say to me, oh yes, it's going to happen. I went, yes. no, it's no, not. No, it's not. No, it's absolutely <laughs> And I think not. we've all been In fact, none right. of this would have happened if it hadn't been for Valerie Bellacon coming that's in. Right. And absolutely. You're yeah, 100%. He did. Yeah, he, he sees be he it was fantastic wasn't it? but it was soap opera really in the end um, and yeah. the way it all ended up in the court and going fabulous. down to london it was a bigger cheering and, court oh than there was a, for a goal wasn't yeah, it yeah yeah i mean you know it 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 has um affected an awful lot of people i've been this club for 25 years right. uh five as a player and 20 as um, a community officer right and um i never wanted to leave this club I didn't ask for club. a move when I was here as a player. I never yeah. asked for a move. I was sold because you're a commodity. Yeah. Uh, and I never wanted to leave the community trust. No. But sometimes your health and your, the situation that you're in yeah. dictates to where you're going to go. Yeah. And I'm a true believer that God um, guides you. Yeah, and he guided me out the door. <laughs> but I'm coming. You. I'm coming back. Eamon says he never guided okay. me. Cook. Where was he when yeah, he okay. needed help? Oh God, so Can we get him in? Is he in on the video? Good to have Eamon. So you got Eamon O'Keefe here again, cra- know, crashing the party. <laughs> it's good to have him here. They told me that because he's a. God fearing man, am I right? Yeah, I am, yeah. As soon as, as, soon as I knew God was here, I thought, Absolutely, that. absolutely. That's when I wanted you in here. Yeah. No, it's very interesting to hear, to hear him saying because um, we're not utilised enough. You know, the more you go around the ground and the more people say, no, oh, Derek's there and Eamon's there and all this, you know. We could do, we, I've, we've, we've spoke of the, of the thing, and including yourself, you know that, Lee. Yeah. We've got all this, John Cross <laughs> as well. The ex players. I don't think it's just about ex players. I think about the, the the. I was talking to John before about the, the actual current. players, current players, where it should be. The minute you sign on here, you you become, a Blackpool player. But as soon as you leave, you should be an ex. Well, you are an ex Blackpool player. But you should, be told that at the start to say you'll always be belong. You know, you'll always yeah. be a, a part of a, it. A, yeah, part of it. So if you could move on to a bigger club, say, yeah, yeah. we'd still get an invite to come and. To come to, sure. to Blackpool Foot because that's how it is. People are, are uh, we've met people. Here. I'm just disappointed that these the likes of Derek. Every time it seems to be me and uh, Derek, I don't know whether people are fed up. And <laughs> just don't, but, 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 but I want I wanted the other players to come and say yes. we'll help as well and all that. But it's been a, it's been a it's hard. been hard. Well, well it's hard to pull of, them because of the oysters. Really, no one's wanting no, to I know, do but, it. It's but, been a toxic. But the oysters we've no, had right. we've had the same things with the oysters. But we tried to do something about it. Yeah. We tried to yeah. say we tried to support. The right, the righteous, if you like. Yeah. We try to support it by doing our bit, 
and I thought the rest of the players sort of hid in the thing and, and then they, they'll all come back now and say, oh, you know, yeah. we'll have the tickets. And but as fans, but we've got as a, fans, you know, we, we really treasure our ex-players, you know, we have such yeah. fond memories. I mean, you know, when I did the interview with you, I was like, oh my God, it's Henry O'Keefe. I was like, yeah. I, I almost couldn't like speak. <laughs> it was ridiculous. The, the yeah, you were, you were ridiculous. The, the ironic yeah. thing is, <laughs> a lot of players... Uh, and, and we're going to work on this because it's not so it's not a quick fix yeah a lot no. of players have mental issues right yeah uh, and have, have, have fears uh, all sorts of uh, anxiety you've no idea how many players suffer from that now I got a phone call the other day I got a phone call the other day from Clark Carlisle oh, oh, right, well, yeah. saying yeah. saying yeah. he he gets all our uh, e- e- emails and stuff that we send out but he's never been able to, he can't play anymore. His knees are not shot at. Yeah. He said, I will do any talks, anything, right? This is only recently. Now, he's moved back up north. He's, he's in living in Preston. So we will start to utilise Carl more. Yeah. Uh, Clark, oh, because Clark, come for Clark, I, rem- Clark Carl, I remember I Clark as a young, a young man, you know, and he's been through the mill. Don't think that just because you've been a footballer, life is wonderful. Oh, no, it's not. Is it that... Like, you know, when you said you scored that goal right yes. at the end, yeah. I, I can imagine that, like, for me, I would imagine that's like a massive rush of adrenaline. Oh, absolutely. And you're on such a high, yeah. and then obviously yeah. the next day, if you're doing the ironing, you're thinking, oh, <laughs> I was scoring a goal. By the way, but you know what I, mean? I did the do, washing, she did the ironing. Down, <laughs> hey, mine, you having a laugh. Is it the come down <laughs> well, that gets, he, you know, he the, scored loads ends, and loads of goals. And, uh, I just think after it, it that, finishes. for the first few seconds, Derek, yeah. don't you? For the first few seconds, I wouldn't know where I was. Oh. Yeah. It was like, I remember my, my biggest fear was when I hit the ball, if it was gone past the goalkeeper's hand and I knew it was going to the net, I was away. Yes. And I used to dread thinking if it hit the bar and come out and I'd be in it. You ran off. I like him going, oh my God, it's not gone in. <laughs> you know, I and everyone's going, an idiot. I can show you a picture at Bloomfield Road of Tony Kello, I think it is. Yeah. Straight hitting the ball, so he's made contact with the ball. I'm behind him, and I'm like that. You'd think the ball had gone in the net, and yeah. I knew it was going in the net because it, 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 he hit it, and I thought yeah. it's yeah. a goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was so celebrating. Yeah. Yeah. Bef- I'll show you the picture, well, and you the won't believe it. As fans were the same, you know, you see it going in, you think it's going in, you know, you're you're up, you're up. And I I, I was just like, see him. Derek, you know yourself though, when you've you've hit it and it's past the keeper's leg or something, it's in, in it, you know, it can't not be in. But I hope his biggest fear was it deflected off the the floor or something. What about when somebody run in and tapped it in? (laughs) Oh, no, no, it was already over the line, you know, it'd be a bigger argument. I remember it was... Uh, I, it's, the thing is, is I don't think, I, like I said before, we need to utilise today's people yeah. as well as the, the, the latter. Yeah. And they need to knit them together because it's almost like mm. we don't know you, them up there, them lot up there, you know. Yeah. It's got to be that we can intermingle Sorry. and bring well, them all well, in the same thing. What I would say is social media, like Lee now, coming yes. along and doing this. Yes. Now, this, is, this can be massive for us because we can actually go to the players who can't get here. Yes. Right? Not everybody has a car. Not everybody lives nearby, you know. Yeah. I tell you what else these we can are do. Things we, we, Derek, these are things we're going to be discussing. We Derek, what else trips. we can do is we can talk to the manager because he's in our... Yeah, absolutely. And we can Martin, ask yes, him because... Yes, because, because I'll tell you why. Samuel, is fair play to him. If you, if someone said to him, can you get one of our players at such a place, he'd have a turn each and say, you can yeah, use, you two yeah. can go on your turn. Yeah. Now, I think we can talk to him. And yes. I think well, we can make that happen. Simon Grayson. Yeah. yeah, so we can not only could John Cross can so pick Larry, up the old the older players. Is watching. Are you watching, Larry? Larry Grayson, if you're watching. Larry. <laughs> Short, sort yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we can. Like John Cross, has got all the contacts in the world of the ex players. Yes. If we can speak to Larry. Why did he call him Larry anyway? Larry Grayson. I know that. But, I mean, you know what I mean? His nickname. He's, he's, I know, but he's not. I hope no, he's better he's than Larry. Grayson. He's always been known as Larry. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> have, having so affectionate. Been, yeah. Having been in the community so, side for 20 years, yeah. and, and the, the, the community trust side um, when we became a charity, yeah. let me tell you, all our players, all our players who are contracted, all do their turn. They all go into schools, they all have to do it, and all that information is all sent to the PFA. Right. And if they don't hit the target, the PFA are on to them. So our, our players are in the community, you know, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. What I would say is, um, we need to get more publicity for it. You yeah. Know? We need well, to get, and, and, and it would be nice. It. it would be really nice if the ex players, some of our ex players, were brought along too to feel more part of it. There's, now that's not 
you know, not everybody will be able to do that. We know no. that because some of our, you know, players are busy, they're working or whatever, including myself. But but it's nice to be offered. It's nice to feel part of something. Yeah. And that's what we want to get back. If you remember when we set this up, John, yeah, all them years ago, we really felt part of something, yeah? It dwindled away. Yeah. It dwindled well, away, it dwindled away because, because of, of the situation. Yeah. Uh, and um, it was sad. But you know what? We're coming back. We're coming back. Well, I've got the two of you here. Yeah. You're doing autobiography, is oh, that yes. right? Yes. So Mine's already done. And you've done it. Mine's already done. Eamon O'Keefe. Eamon O'Keefe has an autobiography, <laughs> don't you, Eamon? Yes. It's very it's about Derek. Derek. It, it is it's very. About <laughs> I tell you what, that's what it's called about, Derek. <laughs> It's very nerve-wracking, isn't it? Because no, it's not at all. Uh, well, I, 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 I've, I'm You're making it sound as though it's so when you, all, no, I've got, all I have to do is say exactly when someone asks me a question. Yeah. No, no. I only wanted to play football. I only yes, wanted to yeah. play football. Yeah. Available yeah. most Amazon. Amazon. Amazon, Amazon yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I'll put a link in the video yeah, below. There's about a million. They sold a million. I mean, if, if no one's got one, I, I'll. Uh, I've got a million. million. I've got yeah. a million in house. I know. He's got a million. He's got a million in house. Got a million to sell. No, no. It's. So what, what, what's your autobiography going to be called? It's going to be called um, From the Troubles to the Tower because I played all my football career through the Troubles in Northern Ireland ah. and um, I ended up in the Tower, obviously here. Yeah. Um, so my wife picked the title, obviously. Um, so you have to How the Troubles then, It's How the Troubles Impacted <laughs> on My Football Career. I thought you'd call something like Expense. Expense. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Well, you could, you, you could do that. You could, it's a good one, that, actually. I quite like that. So, he's an ex, yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, the reality is, um, I've, it's taken me seven years. Uh, I've binned it about five times, but I, I actually let somebody have a read of it uh, who, who works at the PFA. Right. And he rang me when he came back from holiday and said, I loved it. I loved it. He said, I cried. I laughed. Wow. He said, it was brilliant. He said, I, I started reading it in the morning. He said, and I couldn't put it down, and I read it in one day. Mm. So it's only three pages, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but so 16, is, 64 is it out? Well, I'm actually. It's it, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to think it's being proofread at the moment. I could get it out in a matter of months if I wanted to. Right. John wants me to do the Christmas market. I, I don't mean, know. No, he only wants you to work on the Christmas market. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> he doesn't want you to sell your book on it. Book signings, yeah. I think joking apart, though, yeah, the, the, the yeah. good bit about this is, yeah. is the fun that we, we could have. Mm. Of, of, I think Derek, especially in mm. in this town, mm. we can we can like and liven people up who, who are sort of our absolutely, and, you know, gone a bit. <clears> yeah. I think on the pitch, yeah, has nothing yeah. to do with us. No, no, nothing no, to do no, with no, us. No, no, nothing. But no. off it. Yeah. we've got a lot to offer yeah. and yeah. I think this is the time to come forward and say this is a package where we could get into these yes. hotels and get into these yes. people that are in the town yeah. and make this club a, 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 it's nothing if, if it works on the pitch as well great but if we can make it work off it I, I think, think, um, think we've got a chance I think some of the ideas without going overboard yeah. uh, some of the ideas that I've talked to with John which has been discussed with him in, yeah. <coughs> will make us um, uh, more prominent in, yeah. in this uh, community and it's all about working together yeah you know doing things on your own is very difficult sure. you know um, for instance the community trust the football in the community for all the 20 years they've been here if you went out into that street and asked people what they do some of them will go what do they do yeah no idea uh, oh uh, I'm talking about the previous owner he didn't know anything about what the community trust did. But what he did know was the turnover. And I know that for a fact. Yeah. That's sad. It is sad. Because this is not about money. No. This is about your community. Yeah. This is about helping your community. This is about inspiring your community to be part of a football club. Yeah. And that's actually what we're going to do. Well, I think... And we've got some time. great ideas. It's I don't want to say too much. We're coming together no. as a community again. Absolutely. This is a community club. We've lost yes. it all. We've been not a penny more. Fans are oh. coming back. Fans can't yes. wait. Everybody's excited. Oh, yeah. so Listen, this is... Roll on the crest of a wave, well, Derek. You know, that's Eamon and I and John are so much more upbeat. Can I just say, Lee, that it's been a, a pleasure, actually, to see someone with your enthusiasm and all that, to actually get this going. And I hope that for Derek and us and John 
that we can be a bit of a team like this because uh, even though you've shown us up and you've got stupid sunglasses on and, all that <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. you can't remember anyone's name you after, and you haven't ironed your yeah. shirt. Yeah. I did, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's called banter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm, but no, we're we saying we really, 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 really appreciate it. I was his favourite the other week. <laughs> no, I'm, and and, see him and, and the now. reality is, he did a fantastic job at Dave Sorrell's uh, do. You know, yeah. so impressed, so professional. Um, Don't the, overdo it. Then. The old coverage, the old <laughs> coverage. Oh, it was it was brilliant. Everybody was like this. Wow, yeah. watching Newcastle play in um, yeah. Walsall. My yeah. God, it was Watch wonderful. Forest. But we looked, Nottingham Forest. Sorry, yeah. Walsall. This is we, what, it was these are the things right. we miss as well. You know, this kind of oh. Oh. asking Derek when he played oh, and then George right. Best and all that. Yeah, it, for me, it's like, oh my God, That's I should just sit stories. and listen. Like, you yeah. know, I mean, who was the funniest player? Would you say in the dressing oh, room? Oh, Steve Harrison. Steve Harrison, without a doubt. Steve Harrison's in the book. Uh, oh no, he he could he could take people off. He used to take uh, Alan Brown quarter to ten for ten o'clock, boys. <laughs> you know, and 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 <coughs> he's world famous. You know, uh, who? Cluffy. Oh well, obviously he Cluffy. did Brian Brian Clough and all that. But yeah, but but Steve Harrison was a funny man. Never mind uh, taking people off. He used to dress up and uh, do the like a panda man show. Oh, at the, Christmas they love time. it. They love he it. Some was of them absolutely like that, like phenomenal. But do you know what though, Derry? There's also That's... there's also classic lines from someone who you don't expect it from. Yeah. We got on the plane when we got promotion. Yeah. And the gaffer Sam Ellis turned mm. around to the players and said, right. From now on until we get back on the plane, I'm not being on the beach, I'm not having it called boss and all that, so I'd rather you call say Sam. Is everybody alright with that? And Alec Dyer, who was as right as right, just got up and went, Okay, big bean face <laughs> <laughs> And it was just one yeah, of the expecting him to come out of that line. I'll, I'll remember that on the way back. Absolutely. <laughs> it was absolutely oh, right. nice. Yeah, yeah but you know, because you because you don't because you don't expect it from no, him, he no, just, it's he just got up and said it, and he, he wasn't even drunk. <laughs> Salik hardly had it. Somebody know. mentioned on a view from the tower. Do you remember getting dressed up as Starsky and Hutch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got the picture still. Yeah, yeah. I've got the picture. Dressed up as Starsky. Uh, and Hutch. Was that, dressed who's that with? Miss Snowball is my other nickname. Yeah, that, he gets dressed up a lot. Snowball, I believe, Snowball was because I had very, very blonde hair. <laughs> ah, I was yeah. a young person. I, I, I went through all my school days being Snowball. With and a dress, uh, yeah, I loved it. I actually it's loved like it. getting dressed up with a dress on him, um, <laughs> and it made me melt. You did have blonde hair, didn't you? <laughs> Call me snowball, but but I, and here here's the best one. I'm making my debut for Northern Ireland, and and it, there's forty odd thousand screaming. And on Sunday, because there was the troubles, you see, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they they played it on the Sunday, no alcohol. Yeah, I'm stood and I'm wait, walking down. They're going to walk down the tunnel, and there's the spying cop all the, the, the standing, obviously, and all the crack pots that all went in there they were wonderful and I'm ready to go and this lad goes go on snowball kick him <laughs> <laughs> nobody would have understood what the he was on about except me yeah, said, yeah. because like that's what he called me at school yeah, 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 yeah. and I still bump into people yeah. who, who, who have, you know know and yeah. go alright snowball wow. they still call me snowball oh, and I think it's great yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it, it doesn't bother me things like that have, of you, course, thought, have you thought of wearing a wig I have I have, I think but look it well doesn't really it. suit me. We've got to whiz this. <laughs> that black wing doesn't. Off, yeah. Trying to take <laughs> off George <laughs> Best. <laughs> but no. Like the Aaron O'Keefe show. We, we, we love it, we love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it's ironic that we're both gone bald, aren't we? Yeah, both blonde. And none I've, of, we, we couldn't shed, head a ball. You know I'll, I'll be dead honest with you now. <laughs> you shaved your head? When I was coming, I was asking my missus to do my hair, but she had to shoot up because of the, of the job she does. And if you look at the back of the head, I missed half of it yeah, off. Yeah, you missed. Oh yeah. Because oh, yeah. I've it one of them, like. Yeah. Yeah. And then I thought, yeah. oh, I can't get my arm right. Oh my god. <laughs> Shave your own head, still. It's, at least it's better than John's. Yeah. John, you're very shy over there. <clears throat> oh no, it's been great for you. Like I say, I think we need to get this uh, boxed yeah. off with the, you know, the with the with not only the ex players that when they come along to the game. Yeah. But I think that's another thing we'll have to bring up, won't we? We need somewhere where we can, where you can have the privacy of that and yes. bring the, bring and, and even the opposition, something. even the opposition mm -hmm. manager. 
Yeah. You know, with the, you're playing on the day. Oh, it'd be great. That, it? We we need to get that so that every so it's worth watching because we can either laugh at it after when we say we beat you five 0 yeah. and we're giving it all up before it, or we can, we can make that yeah, banter. But also yeah. all these um, boxes and things that people have paid a lot of money to watch the match for. Yeah. We can bring a couple of the players around, well, can't we, to yeah. them and say, you know, what did you think, and let them have their own two penny with you. You know, know what's ironic is that we 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 can actually so contact ex players from other clubs. Yeah. So that's never happened before. Well, we could actually maybe invite a couple of ex players who possibly we know or or are very prominent, you know, in, in the team that we're playing. Would they like to come and have some hospitality? Yeah. Would they like to share some of this on our yeah YouTube? You know, well, we can um, invite. We can it makes a story. Yeah, we can know. invite them. Last year, <laughs> John. So much. Last year, John Cross took me to the um, after the matches into the lounges where. All right, we'd got beat on one, I think, and the rest we'd won a couple or two, but we went in and they were just happy to say, oh, do you remember this and do you remember him and do you remember that? And it, and it sort of made their little party day. Of course it does. And it was great. And then, all right, we went in others where they were a bit gloomy when they got beat, and it's not the nicest place to go anywhere when they no. got beat, because everyone wants to just sort of think. The, the highlight of the day has not only been a lovely meal, a great drink, a nice day out and all that, and the ideal thing is they've won as well, you know. Yeah. So that can't be all the time. We accept that as players, no. as ex-players. But if we can combine the two, yeah, um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's a big. That's and all the other big football clubs do this. Yeah. So why shouldn't we? No, exactly. Yeah. Somebody did mention actually on a view from the tower that uh, they liked the fact that you went on like mazy runs or you know you, you, you yeah. know I mean? Sometimes yeah. you held onto the ball a bit too long. But apart from that, you, you used to like your well, uh, your, your yeah. ma ma yeah, mazy bit, runs. I was a bit gangly and I was a bit. But do you know what? I always played with enthusiasm. Yeah. And the one thing that Alan Brown always gave me was fantastic. He was fantastic at Berry with me, and he was fantastic at Blackpool. Right. He used to say, "Let Spencey do whatever he wants over the halfway line." Ah, okay. Because I was very Licence. much, uh, and that gave me the confidence to go and do things. I mean, I scored goals at Bury that I never scored at um, Bloomfield Road or or uh, in other clubs. Yeah. Because the the, the freedom he gave me at Bury was amazing. Yeah. You know, and 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 no criticism, which was no. fantastic. As soon as as soon as you get criticism from a manager. And, and you know, I, I, I personally, as a player, I didn't take criticism very well. No, I don't. If think, I'm I being honest, I don't think I always was. tried a hundred percent. I, yeah. I even more. I, and and if I had a bad day, everybody has a bad day. You know. Yeah. I didn't do it deliberately. You know. Yeah. So. Uh, so yeah, I so used to you, love it. You played. So you, did you play at Blackpool under Alan Brown? Or yes. Did, yes, yeah. Alan Brown bought you, me. You also played under Bob Stoko. Bob Stoko. Bob Stoko was a fantastic uh, guy very honest uh, and I was there when when he um, left the club too oh. and he had some choice words to say about the um, the directors then really? and the, I'll never forget the the outburst um, and, and um, was that Bill, Bill, Bill Cartmill yeah was that Bill Cartmill yeah, yeah. yeah and, and I, I'd, I'd scored two goals the week before against Chester here at home over Christmas and we had the Wheel Tappers and Shunters Club on the TV, <laughs> Granada TV. Right. And they were in the Tangerine Club. And he was given, Bob Stogo was given a vote of confidence. <laughs> oh, no. Well, once they said, and Bob's got a vote of confidence from the board of directors. He knew he was going. Everybody went like that. Oh, no. He's going, he's going to be, and he was sacked the next week. Really? And then we went into the South Stand the old south stand, we went in the home dressing room, he got all the players in there. Peter McParland was there, who was, a, who was his assistant and a lovely man. And he absolutely slated the directors. I would not like to put, use them words wow. <laughs> on, no, on this programme. No, it's not. It's and I'd never seen somebody <laughs> so uh, wound up. Yeah. And, and he had every right to be. You know, yeah. he was an honest guy. Yeah. When I went on that field, I didn't care who scored a goal. No. I just wanted to win. If I scored a goal, fabulous. I loved it. Yeah. I loved, absolutely loved scoring goals. I love scoring goals now and walking football. Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. And yeah, because you're still involved, aren't you, with, the, with the community I, trust. Do you, trust, you, yeah. you run the walking football? No, no, I don't run the walking football. I just um, actually um, play. 
Oh, you play. And I've played for Fleetwood for the last few years. Right. Um, but my allegiance now is back to Blackpool. Right. I started uh, with the Community Trust with Blackpool, with yeah. Jimmy Armfield, and, um, but I couldn't keep it up because uh, of, of work commitments. Right. And also, they were in Stanley, uh, in the inside, in the, and the, pit, the, the ground was very hard. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, it, my knees mm. were struggling. No. But once the, um, once I went to Fleetwood uh, and they had the new 4G, 4G. I, it was wonderful. They yeah. played on carpet. Yeah. And uh, I played there. So you played down at yeah, Vida now? It. Yeah. And now, no, I'm going to Vida now. Yeah. Now you're at Vida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, I'm doing So what both. age group are you in? For, for I'm the 60, over 65s. Over 65s. And it's wonderful. There's, um, I was talking to them down there because I've done a little video. People can have a look at that. I'll, I'll, I'll put a link in on the video to, you know, to, I've shown walking football, but, but like obviously you know, there's even like an England team, isn't there? There's an England team. Yeah. I, I I'm very, very you passionate. You play for the Northern Ireland team. I, well, I have been to Northern Ireland recently and I uh, mentioned it to Crusaders, my old club. And um, they've got 4G. And the reality is that um, I would like now the new, the new people who have come into the club, Mr. Yeah. Sadler, all oh, get in. Yes. He's wonderful. I came to the meeting, listened to him, was inspired by him. Yeah, he's Hence inspired. Hence the fact I'm sat here. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think our ex-players now have got a massive role to play yeah. in, in bringing the, the whole the whole community together totally um, and we've got some fantastic ideas uh, and one of them would be to have our own ex-players uh, walking football team wow now Liverpool have their walking football I know Alan Kennedy very well and I know that they've got a team and they do a lot of stuff for charity right. so when we actually get some of our other players to play yeah. these are the sort of things we'll be looking at oh, and yeah. if I'm being honest I have mentioned this to you, John, and you know this is. I, I think we should challenge the team that went into the Premier League, the ex players. I think we should challenge them to a game of walking football. What, Can you imagine? Charlie Adams? Yeah, well, they, they've all got to walk. Oh, yeah. Charlie yeah. Adams, all the lads, why oh, not? Yeah, they They're all ex, a lot of them are be ex players, a lot of them are really fit. But what a you great game. On Charlie Adam, did. What a great game. What a great Going game back. that could be. You know, just walking football. Let them see what they're going to be doing in another 20 years. Yeah, the now. future selves. The future. That's what's going to be. But, you know, walking football but you is not it. as easy as you think. No, I know. I went down to video. It's, I, it's, I'm it's, telling it's, you it's, it's pretty it's intense. It's a very, very good game. Yeah, no, it's good. And, and Our the, over seventies were uh, went to, uh, gone to Spain. Uh, yes, they did. spoke to Chris Steve and, and, and yep. they came back they with won, trophies. They won the yeah, trophy. yeah, so. I mean, it's not all about winning trophies. No, um, no, it's just. But you know what? It's, it's lovely when you win. Yeah. But the reality is that a lot of older people, like myself, sixty-seven, and um, well, you need the camaraderie. You need the bit of banter that we talk about in the change, yeah. the change rooms. You need to play. You need to be out there doing something, not sitting and nobody caring about you. You know, when you go there, you feel part of something. You know, you're, yeah. you're, you're a teammate again. You know, I played with a guy at Fleetwood who was um, 87 years of age. Right, wow. And, and he, was, he was on the pitch. He could hardly run, but he was there and he was reliving his, his probably his childhood when he played football. You know, it was wonderful. Yeah. It was absolutely wonderful. That's what walking football is about. It's about anybody going up there and having a go yeah. and moving. If you're moving, that's good for you. Yeah, sure. And, 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 and I've met so many people who have lost, oh my God, so much weight. Yes. I'm but talking like 20 dancing. stone people, wow. 20 odd stone, who have got involved in, in the walking football and, and who have then, because they want to go to walking football, they have had a look at their diet. They say, what can I change? What can I do? And they've changed their lives. Yeah. And I played with one at Berry recently on a tournament, and he was unbelievable. He was very, very inspirational. So that's what walking football can do for you. And I think our ex players can inspire old, the older generation, yeah. men and women, yeah. to play walking football. Yeah. And by the way, the national health will save millions. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> because yeah. Because we'll all be yeah, fit. Yeah, because you'd all be fit. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That was what it was all intended in the first place. So what but we, it has taken off, by the way. It's the biggest um, growing sport in, in, uh, in England. Fantastic. So it's brilliant. I need to ask I'd like to take it to Northern Ireland because they're not doing enough there. 
I you? know you're now the uh, the chairman of the ex players former yeah. former players association. So yes. you're going to be doing lots of work now with with the club with the ex players. What sort of things are you going to be doing? Yeah, we right. need to be now more prominent in the community. Yeah. Now we've got some great ideas. Right. Uh, the well, I, I met the, I met the new owner. Yeah. Uh, here at the meeting of uh, 80 people, and um, I I the, the main theme was can we get can we connect with the community again? Can we get the people who have lost that um, that feeling for the club? Can yeah. we get them back here? Yeah. Don't tell me that the ex players can't inspire them to get oh, back here. I know proud, they can. We are proud I know of the players. We are. And, and 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 we just need to now put a plan together going forward. I have a uh, had a chat with John Cross, um, and we have a, a plan that we want to implement over the next twelve months. Right. And if it comes off. You know, it'll be to the benefit of this community. Fantastic. Um, and having done 20 years in this community as a community officer, I think I know a wee bit about how to inspire people yeah. to get back. Well, it's a good mm -hmm. time. It's a good time, Derek. I mean, you well, know, the I'm fans are coming back. We're all yeah. enthused and everything yeah. else. Derek, just like to thank you very much for your time. You've been an absolute star. Uh, no, no, thanks for your pleasure. time with Blackpool. Thanks for giving me the yeah. time today. Thanks for all the work you're going to do with the Community Trust for the ex-players. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, Eamon's gone now as well, so we'll thank, th thank you, Eamon, as well. You're probably driving home now, but uh, I think everyone's going to love watching this video. Good. And I'll be Good. really, I'll get it out as quick as I can. Yeah, and I don't, I'm sure everybody's going to love it. Not so thank you very much for your time. I do appreciate it. And hopefully it. we will meet again. Yeah. <laughs> thank yeah. you very much. Bye now. Bye. So that was an amazing interview with Derek Spence. I'm sure you're going to really enjoy that and the work he's doing with the community trust on on, on things around, you know around the community to get people back involved with Blackpool Football Club. I also met up with John Cross, former players, and he took me around and showed me all the work they've been doing on the new Hall of Fame, which has moved from the north stand into the southwest corner. It's going to be absolutely amazing. You'll see from the video, you know, that I do later how good it is. Also, Eamon O'Keefe was there, so I had a lovely chat with him. He wants to do lots of things on the channel, so there's going to be more things coming for you. It's going to be a very exciting season. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited about the, this meeting today. Hope you enjoy this video so much. Um, I took a little bit of the pitch as well. They've got some new um, lights have come in. One set of lights have come in from the San Siro, apparently, and the other ones have come from a Dutch club as well. They're absolutely enormous. I didn't see them totally opened out, but um, or, or, the thing I'm getting f from the groundsman is with the lights on the pitch all the way through the summer, it's going to be all the way through the season. It's going to be just. It's going to be a great pitch. It's, it's something we haven't done before, but you know they get these lights on on the pitch in the winter, putting light on at night and everything, and the grass continues to grow. We won't have any of the problems that we've had in previous seasons. It's just it's just all do all to do with spending a bit of money, and we know Simon Sadler's you know going to do that for us. So hope you enjoy these videos. Thank you very much for watching. Keep subscribing. Keep clicking that notification notification bell, and you'll see any more videos that are coming up.